Now there are many different ways to get a manual for your tractor and I'm cheap and I don't want to buy one. So what I found to do is go to your tractor, um, just grab a piece, this, this should do, grab a piece from your tractor and head on over to your chicken coop part and go into your chicken coop and mix that part in with their food. And we'll mix it in and we'll come back and we'll check in a couple days. Now, if you're lucky, and you check, ah, dang it. Okay, so you get eggs and sometimes you'll get a, yeah, sometimes that happens. You'll get a Steiner tractor catalog. I guess I'll have to wait another, another day. Okay, let's check again. Oh, yes. Was it you? Look at that. There we go. Good deal. Is this the, yeah, it's the right one. Oh, this is great. This will be perfect. This will work out just fine. Hey, welcome back to the tractor fixing project where I'm trying to restore this 1959 Ford 601 Workmaster diesel tractor. That was my grandfather's and his father before him. So I was able to bring it to my house in the last video and take a look at it and see where some of the issues were. Now that I've had it in my possession for a little while, I've been able to do some changes. As you can tell, it looks quite a bit different. So let's go ahead and jump in to what I've done so far. Of course, once I got the tractor onto the pole barn, I had to start cleaning it. And I quickly realized that the grease was way too thick on it. So I broke out the bucket and brush with a little bit of purple power in there and tried to start scrubbing some of that grease and dirt off. Unfortunately, it was still pretty tough. The dirt came off, but the grease was sticking on there very well. Tried to spray it on and use a brush on these components, but it still didn't work. So I ended up spraying the concentrated purple power on there, and as you can see, oh it ended up working very well. Of course, you know what that means. I broke out the toothbrush and the purple power and spent the night brushing each little nook and cranny as much as I could of the tractor to try to get this preliminary grease off. And it ended up looking pretty darn good. I was really happy with this first initial cleaning, not a lot of grease. So when I'm working on it from now on, I won't get super messy. It's still gonna get messy, but this first cleaning did definitely help quite a bit. Now, of course, once I got the tractor a little bit cleaned up, it was time to focus on that old starter. I was actually able to find a new starter, a refurbished starter, over at an advanced auto parts in Mobile. And luckily at the time, my in-laws were visiting down there, and so they were able to pick it up for me and bring it back. Then I asked Van if he would assist me in getting this new starter on to give me a couple of pointers, and he decided to come down and help me out. Of course, we had to get that oil filter off first or else the starter wouldn't come out, so eventually we slowly got it turned off and it was time to pull out the starter. Unfortunately, when we pulled out the starter, it looked a little bit different than the starter I had purchased, but we looked at it and thought maybe Maybe it would work, but again, we weren't too sure. It looks a bit different. Oh. It looks a bit different. But sure enough, we charged forward and tried to get it to start. We went ahead and installed it. And unfortunately, we realized that the button for the starter wasn't working properly. And this made me realize that we didn't actually test the old starter beforehand but we had this one installed and it ended up working just fine. So I didn't quite know if it was just the shape of the starter. Maybe it was a new kind of technology that made it a lot more efficient than the old style of starter, but I still wanted to pull this new starter off. And so what I then did was took some jumper cables and tested the old starter to see if it would turn over. And sure enough, it did turn over and See, that made me curious. I wasn't too sure if the old starter actually didn't work or if the button was just not working. So I decided to go ahead and take off that new starter by removing the power cable and then undoing those three bolts slowly. Of course, taking out the oil filter. That'll come in handy later. And then I pulled off the new starter. As you can see, the end here looks a little bit different than the old one, as we'll see here in a second. But first, I needed to clean up the face where the starter goes to the engine, and then I had to install that old starter back on. As you can see there, the end looks quite a bit different than the new one, and 
you got to be real careful trying to get it in there and making sure the teeth mesh up. Of course, the end is a little bit bigger than that old one, which turns out to be an old starter for an 8N, 9N tractor, not the 601. It was labeled wrong. So I went ahead and since I pulled that off, I might take it apart and cannibalize it for parts, as you'll hear before. But I got the old one put on and let's see if you can guess what I actually forgot to do. That's right, I completely forgot to put the filter back on the tractor and it was dribbling out after I turned it on. Thank goodness I didn't have it on for a long time. Of course, Van warned me about that. And what made it even more scary was even after I put the old oil back in, don't worry, it was a clean bucket, it would not turn over. I later found out this is because the starter, while it can turn over, it is not powerful enough to turn the tractor completely fast enough to get it to start. I need to boost it and get it a high enough voltage to where it will even turn over. So I'm either going to cannibalize that old one or take a look at the inside of the old starter and see if I can maybe get it to work. Maybe it's the brushes, maybe it's the coil. I'm not too sure yet, but I'll have to take a look and see if I can fix that. But for now, I think I'm okay with jump starting it. So underneath this old 601 is a little square plug with a drain in it. Let's see if we can get this plug off. There we go. Alright. Ooh, that does not sound good. That sounds... I really hope this pan is big enough. You know what? Got a bigger pan. I feel much safer if I just have this big bucket underneath it. I'm trying to keep it from just dumping out all at once, but... Oh, okay. It's dripping a little. Oh, there we go. Here comes the rest of it. I think there's five quarts. If there's more than five quarts, I'm screwed. Oh, thank God it has the... It has the filter in it. See that filter? A lot of them, apparently this falls off, this filter falls off, this bottom filter. That's a plus. All right, now my hands are covered in old diesel oil. Man, that stuff's nasty. Oh my gosh, this stuff is black. Now granted, I don't know what's in those bottles. It could be black as this. I hear diesel oil is pretty nasty stuff. We'll see. There we go. Oh, I got it. Must be because it's hot outside. Little did he know it would not be this simple. All right, back from AutoZone to get the actual correct oil filter. Actually, no, this is incorrect. Here I'm spouting a bunch of nonsense that I think I know what I'm talking about when it comes to diesel filters and oil filters for different vehicles. I tried to get an oil filter at O'Reilly's and then I tried advanced auto parts and I thought that was the right diesel filter. Turns out I just needed to go to Tractor Supply in the first place because yeah, they have tractor filters. Go figure, right? But yeah, watch this. All right, and I am a complete moron, aren't I? Filter doesn't fit. Yeah, this will not fit. It's too big. All right, well, this is the second Google search that didn't go well. <sighs> Gotta figure something out. Okay, I've decided to call on Audible and I will use the old filter for the time being. And then uh, when I get a new filter and I dump the oil out of this this particular filter I'm going to just add a little bit more oil because I have two gallons of it so put this guy back on deal here 
I'm probably going to replace the oil sooner rather than later anyway, just because I don't know how long it's been sitting here. And depending on how long it has been, you know, sitting here and maybe put in some nice new oil a little more frequently. All right, let's see here. Careful not to cross thread it. Oh, there, got it. Ah, yeah, there we go. Nice and tight. Only the best oil Walmart has to offer. But again, new oil better than old oil. Here. Go. Okay. And we'll transfer over. Check the oil dipstick here. All that nasty oil out of there. Down. Looks almost full. Almost full. I imagine when the oil filter catches some, it'll be a little bit more. So, all right, I'm going to hit up this last one quart. Now, I guess we just have to see if it'll... Uh, start up let's see One, two, three, four. stop up on the tractor starter mode All right, brakes pressed we're in neutral that doesn't work that let's try to start it up The oil pressure looks good. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. I know the the oil didn't. Uh, oil pressure is good. Looked at the gauge. The oil pressure gauge looks fantastic. Tractor feels like it's running really well. And uh, yeah, I think the oil change was successful. I'll probably replace that filter and then put a little bit more oil on it, whatever spills out, once I actually find an actual filter that fits. And then, yeah, we can probably do another drain and fill after maybe an hour or two, a couple more hours, maybe five, ten hours, just to make sure that all the gunk and stuff has kind of been cleaned out and we'll be good to go. So time to continue on with some of the other stuff. Now, of course, the next thing I needed to do was fix the brakes, or at least one side of the brakes. The other side was way too seized, but this side I was able to spray with enough PB Blaster and hit it with the hammer enough times and a little screwdriver to get it jiggled and loose enough. And, of course, I had to tweak it a bit. The clip that retains the rod that engages the brakes unfortunately broke off during that process so I had to use a couple of zip ties just to keep it in place for the time being before I can either make a new clip or maybe I'll print a new clip or something along those lines to get the brakes to work but at least one side of the brakes was working and I could then start using it in the yard and I honestly get so much joy out of driving this tractor I'm able to clear out so much land behind the house and I can't wait to do even more and as you can see here I've got some of the fenders and stuff off as we mentioned in the intro and so we'll go ahead and go there now and show kind of how I removed those things before that I just wanted to show that the reason why it's bare metal in the next scene that's because I wanted to give my hand at removing some of the paint with this grinder wheel attachment I'm not gonna talk for this next little bit here just because the southern knight and me removing these parts kind of makes for a good ASMR experience.
Now, one thing that I found really cool are these things called sealed beam headlights. Unfortunately, I'm 26 years old, so I never got to experience sealed beam headlights. But these are basically glass bulbs, and that's the entire headlight. And when they go out, you can't replace any part of the bulb on the inside, but you can actually go into Walmart today and buy them outright. These are actually pretty old technology, but you can still buy one for about $13. Tech Connections has a really good video, and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to learn a little bit more about sealed beam headlights. Then of course it was on to removing the front cover of the radiator and then the tedious process of trying to even out the fins of the radiator as best as I could. I think the tractor kind of got bumped on the side and so that side is a little bit squished but I did the best I could. Then it was time to remove the final hood. Now the issue is it's a little bit tricky because that back end is not connected. So both sides can kind of jiggle around and I didn't want to put too much force on just one side because it would kind of bend in a weird twisty motion. So I ended up doing my biggest cowabunga hand motion that I could and I, and I eventually got the hood off. All right, then it was time to get the hood brought to my office where I had most of my tools, and then I decided to start taking it apart. And what you'll see is I'm actually making little plastic baggies where each individual screw went and adding a little bit of a description, maybe a little picture on there so I know exactly where it is because these projects take a while and I do not want to forget because I totally will forget. Also, what I did was I took some of the parts and I put them in my ultrasonic cleaner with some purple power to help sort of get some of the grime, gunk, and some of the rust off that you can see here. And it worked pretty well. Then, of course, I had to take the rest off. I went ahead and found my little impact driver to undo the screws, not to do the screws. Don't want to use an impact on there and break the metal. But then I used it for a wire wheel, and then it was time for some cleaning. probably be doing this outside. And that's correct. Yeah, I probably should have been doing it outside, but what this allowed me to do is see it under my shop lights. And yes, I probably could have done it with a bigger brush and a pressure washer to get some of the dirt off. But what this allowed me to do was get a little bit more, I guess, intimate with the part to where I could actually see the inside of this fender and of the different parts to assess the damage that would need to be repaired. And so this gave me a really good chance to take a look and kind of inspect it, kind of like that little eyelet there that has been busted out that I'll need to repair. So it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone where I could both clean the part and assess the damage at the same time, checking the status of the different parts. And as you can see here, I was able to clean up some of the headlights as well. And here is the reveal and the difference between the two parts. One is, of course, the dirty side that I haven't cleaned yet. And then the other side is the clean side. It's got quite a bit of work to do to clean it up but I think we're getting there. And then of course the emblem holder section, front section, which is gonna be probably the first thing that I end up trying to paint. It ended up cleaning up pretty well. Afterwards, I tried my hand at getting some of the dents out, some of the ripples in the metal out by using this little clamp. I don't really have many metal working tools, but this worked kind of well. I'll probably have to get some metal working tools. My grandfather-in-law said he might be able to lend me some, so that'll come in handy. And then I ended up getting this die grinder at Harbor Freight, of course, and used it to try to strip off some of that enamel paint. And it ended up working out pretty well. It hit it with some sandpaper afterwards just to clean up some of the other parts. I'll have to remove some of the dents and some more of that paint later on, but, but overall, I think I'm making good progress. So what's next on this project? Well, as you can see, I've got quite a bit of work laid out for me with these panels. I have to get some of the dents out, some of the holes out, strip the paint, and then probably hit it with a little bit of Bondo and then prime it. Now, I'm probably not gonna paint it in the next video because we're moving into winter and I'm not really sure how I'm gonna go about painting it when it's really cold outside because I hear that can be a little bit difficult. The other thing that I need to focus on is the hydraulic three-point hitch. As you can see here, I've got a 
box blade on the back of it that starts to dip down slowly as it just kind of sits there. It corrects itself, but it starts to dip down. I was doing a little bit of research and I found a video on YouTube that talks about fixing the hydraulics of these tractors. I'll leave a link in the description below of that video. And they say that it might be the hydraulic piston. The main piston has two rings around it, two little O-rings that might be leaking and causing the whole system to drop down. So I'm going to order some O-rings and a couple other parts that they mentioned in the video to get it back up to snuff. I might replace the fluid in there as well. Not 100% sure yet, but that's what I think the plan is. It's a little bit difficult because of course I'm still using the tractor. So every time I do something, it puts the tractor out of commission. So I have to try to do these things fast and it takes a little bit longer to do it. Not to mention filming takes forever, getting the right angles and stuff. The other thing I wanted to mention is that my audience is actually filled with mostly 55 to over 65 year old viewers. So what that tells me is that there's a lot of people with a lot of wisdom watching these videos. So if you've worked with these tractors before in the past and know a little bit about them or a lot about them and want to tell me some tricks and tips on how to restore this thing and some nuances that I might not be thinking about, please feel free to leave a comment below. I would really appreciate it. Please be nice because again, I really don't know what I'm doing some of the times. It's just a lot of research and I'm kind of learning as I go and, and getting help from around me. But if you have any ideas specifically on these tractors, or like I said, just restoration in general, I'd really appreciate it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. And as you can see here, the ah, nuts. Ba -dum -bum -ba -dum -bum. <laughs>